In metals, electrons in the outermost orbit are loosely bound and move freely in all directions. These electrons are called free electrons. When these free electrons tend to leave the metal surface, a positive charge is developed on the metal surface. The positive charge pulls the electron leaving the metal surface. This attracting force is called surface barrier. What would happen if the free electrons are provided with external energy? Yes, you are right. When adequate energy is provided to these free electrons, they gain kinetic energy and cross the surface barrier to leave the metal surface. Such a phenomenon is called emission of electrons. The minimum energy required by a free electron to leave the surface is called work function phi. Work unit is measured in electron volt. One electron volt is the work done to move one electron charge 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulombs through two points in an electric field having a potential difference of one volt. Here are the work functions of few metals. They range from two electron volts to six electron volts. metals emit electrons when they are heated? Yes, when a metal is sufficiently heated to a high temperature, that is 2500 degrees Celsius, the free electrons can absorb the heat energy and overcome the surface barrier. The emission of free electrons from the metal surface when the metal is heated to a high temperature is called thermionic emission. Thermions are the free electrons emitted from a metal when it is heated to a very high temperature. The rate at which thermions are emitted per second from a metal is called its rate of emission. Experimentally, it has been found that the rate of emission depends upon three factors. They are work function of an element, temperature of the surface, surface area of the metal. Rate of emission is inversely proportional to the work function of an element. Rate of emission is directly proportional to the temperature of the surface. The rate of emission is directly proportional to the surface area of the metal. A metal having a very high rate of emission of electrons can be used as electron emitter. A good electron emitter should have two properties. They should have a very high melting point and low work function. Some good electron emitters are tungsten, thoriated tungsten, and tungsten coated with alkali metal oxide. Why is tungsten a good electron emitter? Tungsten is a good electron emitter because it has a very high melting point. But one disadvantage of using tungsten as an electron emitter is that it has a very high work function of 4.52 electron volts. Hence, it needs to be heated to a very high temperature of 2500 Kelvin for it to emit electrons. Let us learn about thoriated tungsten. Thoriated tungsten is tungsten coated with thorium and carbon. An advantage of using thoriated tungsten as an electron emitter is that it has a low work function of 2.6 electron volts. Hence, it can emit electrons 
at a relatively low temperature of 2000 Kelvin. Now, the third good emitter is tungsten coated with alkali metal oxide. It has a very low work function of 1 electron volt. Hence, it can emit electrons at a temperature as low as 1000 Kelvin. There are two kinds of thermion emitters. They are directly heated thermion emitters and indirectly heated thermion emitters. A directly heated thermion emitter is one that starts emitting thermions on being heated with passage of electric current to a temperature above threshold level. An example of a directly heated thermion emitter is tungsten filament. Indirectly heated thermion emitters are those that use the heat supplied by materials with a low work function that is emitting thermions. Examples of indirectly heated thermion emitters are thoriated carbon and alkali metal oxide emitters. hot cathode ray tube is used to convert electrical signals to visual signals. The hot cathode ray tube works on three principles. They are thermionic emission by the cathode plate heated indirectly by a tungsten filament, deflection of the electron beam by a magnetic or electric field, and fluorescence produced when emitted electrons hit a specially coated film. A hot cathode ray tube is a specially designed glass tube evacuated to a pressure of 10 raised to minus 3 to 10 raised to minus 4 millimeter of mercury. The three main components of a cathode ray tube are an electron gun, deflecting plates, and a fluorescent screen. An electron gun has a tungsten filament, an electron emitting cathode plate, a series of grids made of fine wire gauze kept at a positive potential, and a series of anode. The cathode generates electrons when the tungsten filament is directly heated. When the electric signals are fed to the grid, it controls the number of electrons striking the screen. The thermions are then focused and accelerated through the series of anodes till they emerge as a beam of electron. Between the electron gun and the fluorescent screen are either two sets of electrical plates or two sets of magnetic coils. Electric deflecting plates are used in small cathode ray tubes. Magnetic deflecting plates are used in large cathode ray tubes. How are the deflecting plates placed? Yes, one set of plates is placed horizontally. These are called the Y plates. The plates kept vertically are called the X plates. In each pair of plates, one plate is at a negative potential and the other plate is at a positive potential. Hence, an electric field is created between the plates. When a potential difference is maintained between the plates in each pair, the X plates sweep the thermions in the horizontal direction and the Y plates sweep them in the vertical direction. At the end of the cathode ray tube is a specially designed screen coated with a fluorescent material. When the electrons hit the fluorescent screen, a bright spot of light is produced. The color of the light depends upon the fluorescent material coating the screen. 
cathode ray tubes are used in televisions and in radars. In addition, they are also used to locate the defects in electric motors and generators and for checking the waveforms in electrical signals.